Hello and welcome to module 12 IPv6 addressing video number four. All right, so let's continue. So now let's talk about how does a host configure itself with an IP address using Slack, okay? So the first thing that happens when a host starts up, you're writing this down, don't forget, write everything down. So you'll submit them as homework when you're all done, right? Okay, so. Uh, when a host starts up, it uses the following process to configure the IP address. So the first thing that it does, the host generates an IPv6 address using FE80, that's the LLA, link local address. And then he gets that, he creates this address automatically. And then if you are running something previous to your, your operating system is, uh, is prior to Vista, what it's going to do is going to generate this address and then look at the MAC address and use the EUI to create the host portion of the IP. If you have an operating system beyond Vista, which most of us do, will randomly create a host IP address, doesn't use the MAC address, doesn't use the EUI. We'll randomly create a host portion of the IP, stamp it to the FE80 network prefix, and that's it, you're good to go. But when they do that, they send out a a message telling everybody in the line, hey, I generated this random number, this random host. Uh, does anybody have it? If nobody responds, then we're good to go, and then you'll use that IP address. If you have something prior to Vista, you're going to use the EUI. So let's talk about how the EU, EUI generates a unique host ID and stamps it here. So, for example, it's going to use the MAC address. So let's assume that the MAC address of your PC is 20-0-C-F-B-B-C-A-0. So what it does, it's going to take, because remember this address, the first 24 bits is the OUI, and the other 24 bits is your uh, vendor serial number. That's what the IP address, I'm sorry, the MAC address is. So you're going to take that address, and let's just go right down here and split it up and insert FFE in the middle right here. So there is the OUI portion. I'm sorry, 200CFB. Two, two zero zero and the other portion, the vendor serial, the BC A007. And in between them, you put FFE. You're not done. So this is not your host ID. So what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, the first eight bits, all right, and you're going to write it down. So this is the 20, right? And then you're going to change the seventh bit, right, which is right here, setting this seventh bit right here, changing it from whatever it is, you toggle it. If it's a zero, it becomes a one. If it's a one, it becomes a zero. So in this case, because it's a zero, you toggle it to a one. And then this number became becomes 22. So instead of writing 20, you write 22 here in hex. And then when you write that down, this is the this is becomes your um, your host ID. So you take it and you stamp it right next to your FFE80, and that becomes your IP ad, uh, your IP link local address, right? You stamp it right here. So this this becomes your I, your full IPv6 address. Remember, this is your using the EUI, the extended unique identifier. All right? And once that's done, you'll send out a request saying, hey, I generated this IP address, uh, this host address. Does any, anybody have it? So you send out an, a neighboring advertisement. You wait. If nobody says anything, then you're good to go. Otherwise, you have to manually do it. Uh, the host waits for the router advertisement to get the prefix. He gets that using the multicast addressing. So please write all of this down. This is this is very good way of, you know, I broke it down so this way you'll understand exactly what really happens. And so you'll have a better understanding on how a host configures itself. And... Um, all right. So we discussed also using the RA message, you can use stateful, which means you can go directly to a DHCP version 6 server. 
get all your information from there. Um, you don't get the default gateway. That's not correct. So even from a stateful. So that is, you get everything else except your default gateway. Your default gateway is always given to you from um, your router. That's that FF. That's the FE80. Typically is FE80 colon colon one. Or you can use stateless like we've been talking about. All right. Um, so that's that. Those are the steps that you would take. So please write these down, including number four. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is a, uh, some of the IPv6 utilities. When you're typing an IP address to an interface, you're going to type IPv6 add. Right. So, for example, you go to interface. And you say, I remember we type IP, IP add, and then you type 192.168.10.3, for example, with a mask of 255, 255, 255.0, right? Now, that's for IPv4. If you want to type an IPv6 address, you're going to say IPv6 add. And let's say you type FE80, calling, calling one right that's for the default gateway and then you're going to write the word link dash local we'll, we'll do this in class in class that's giving it a link local address and if you want to give it um, a global address you're going to say ipv6 at you're going to say 2001 using the toledo and let's say adb ACAD, so this is going to be your global prefix address, right? And we're going to put you in subnet 0003. And uh, we are going to statically give you, so this is the first 64 bits. So I'm writing double colon, which means all zeros, and I'm going to give you number one. This is for the default gateway, right? So the default gateway has FE80, number one is a host. Because everybody's going to be in FE80, right? All the hosts in the land. And it has a global address, 2001 ADB ACAT and subnet 3, and he's number one. But when you are typing a global address, the GUA, you put a slash 64. You don't have to do it here. Here you have to put space link local. Here you put slash 64. Don't put space, by the way, after the one and hit enter. And then, of course, you type no shut. So that's how you would in how this is how you would configure um, an interface, a default gateway interface. So by the way, you got to go interface uh, gigabit Ethernet zero slash zero. So you go to the interface. This is INT, not INT. All right. So these are the commands that you would type to configure a router's interface with IPv4 address and an IPv6 link local, and an IPv6 uh, global address. All right, another command that is useful with IPv6, if when you type show, remember we type show IPv6 interface brief, INT is supposed to be in here. When you do that and you see up, up, that means the first up, it means the physical layer is okay, and the other up is layer two is okay, which means that you... The, the framing is correct, and it was able to reach data, were able to communicate with each other. So you look for that. IPv6 route, okay? Show IPv6 route. And when you see the there are two, two, um, two entries, typically for each interface. You're going to have the network and the actual IP address of the interface with dedicated using the letter L. And the reason they have that is to specify the IPv6 address assigned to the interface. This is um, not a link local address, by the way. Link local addresses are not including in the routing table. So please write that down and remember that. And we'll show that I'll show you that in, in class because they are not routable. This is to indicate if somebody if somebody wants to communicate with directly just that interface, the default gateway, the router will be able to get to it much quicker. That's why they list the, the L. Right? The C is for the network, for the people that are inside that LAN. All right? So 
The L is specifically when you want to communicate to the default gateway itself. And if you want to, if anything else, it's to the network, then you go with the directly connected network, the C. That's, you're going to see those two entries in the routing table, the C and the L on the same interface. All right, so that really it for IPv6. So we'll practice some of this later on um, in class using Packet Tracer on and maybe we'll get on physical devices. All right, that ends the um, the discussions of chap of module twelve IPv6 addressing. So hopefully, if you need anything to review on IPv6, this is where you come. All right, go over this at least once or twice. Same thing with module eleven. If you want to learn anything about um, IPv4, so you do that. So please write whatever I told you to write down and submit that as homework and I'll we'll move on to module 13 on the next video.